When we render with Arnold, we do need to control our render settings. So let's take a look at the render settings window for Arnold. Now, if we open up render settings, you'll notice that Arnold has a lot of tabs here. Probably the most important one is the Arnold renderer tab. Now the first rollout here is sampling, and this will determine the ultimate quality of the image. The higher the number here, the better the quality of the anti-aliasing and the better the quality of the image. And of course, the longer it will render. Typically, more quality in a renderer means more time. We can also change the type of filter that it uses for anti-aliasing. By default, it's Gaussian, but we have a whole bunch of these that we can use. Now, another really important rollout is called ray depth. Now, what this does is it calculates how many times a ray will pass through the scene before Arnold puts it to bed. So if you want to bounce off a diffuse object, you can bounce off it one time or many times. Now, if you're doing reflections and refractions, you may want to increase this quality so that the light will bounce through more times. So particularly for refractions, you may have a light beam that's going through multiple pieces of glass or transparent objects you'll need to have a number high enough to account for all of that. So, for example, if you have a glass with water in it, the ray is going to hit the surface of the glass, it's going to hit the back of the glass, it's going to hit the water, the back of the water, and then two more times through the glass. And that's already six ray hits just to get through the glass of water. And then that ray may actually bounce back again. So uh, you want to make sure that these numbers are high when you get to final rendering. Now, Again, these will add more time to your render. So if you want to do test renders, you can always keep these low and then ramp them up when you get to final rendering. Now, in addition to this, we have an environment tab, which allows you to create things such as image-based lighting and atmospheric effects. We have motion blur, which I will talk about in just a little bit. And then we also have options for lights and textures how to control them, and how to anti-alias them. If you go over to the System tab, this will show you how it will render in the viewports. And then we also have additional tabs here for things such as diagnostics and overrides. Now, if we want in the overrides, we can ignore any part of the scene. So if you're working on just one type of object, you can ignore things just to turn them off. So as you can see, we've got a lot of control here in the render settings window, and we'll be using this a little bit more as we proceed through this chapter.